In fact, the DAV and Auxiliary together are unsurpassed in building better lives for America's disabled veterans and their families. Auxiliary National Commander Fran Costa is certainly an, ex an example of energetic leadership that motivates the Auxiliary to achieve and exceed their goals and objectives. She was elected National Commander of the DAV Auxiliary at 2016 National Convention of the DAV and Auxiliary in Atlanta, Georgia. She joined the Auxiliary in 1984 as a life member of Westcott Houghton Unit 56 in North Attleboro, and since I'm not from the North, I probably said that wrong. <laughs> Hang on. Massachusetts. Her eligibility is through her husband, Joseph Costa, and multiple family members, including her father, brother, sons, and several uncles. It should be noted that there are currently four generations of family members active in Unit 56. Fran has held leadership positions at both unit and department levels. She is a past commander of the Auxiliary Department of Massachusetts, and she now serves as state standing rule chairperson. Naturally, she has held numerous leadership positions prior to her election as natural, national commander. She became a dedicated advocate for disabled veterans and is extremely active as a volunteer at the Brockton VAMC. Fran's service has been recognized by her, receiving the President's Call to Service Award, as well as the Vision One Patriot Award. Also, she has received an honorable mention for the George Seal Award. A proven leader and a person dedicated to serving our nation's disabled veterans and their families, I present to you DAV Auxiliary National Commander, Fran Costa. Thank you, everyone. National Commander Riley, National Adjutant Burgess, Executive Directors Gary Augustine and Barry Jesnowski, past National Commanders of the DAV and the Auxiliary that are present, CNA President Jonikin, CNA officers, national officers, members, and guests. It is truly an honor to speak to you today, and I must say, it's very impressive to see so many of you here today for a common purpose, to stay united, updated, and cognizant of all facets of the organization and veteran-related issues so that you can assist your fellow veterans and their families. I'm also proud to see so many familiar faces from the auxiliary family here today. Many of us are the spouses, the immediate family members of those dealing with illnesses and injuries sustained as a result of serving our country. We walk with you on your journey for a better life. I am well aware that a number of DAV members in this room have also joined the auxiliary ranks in support of our shared mission. Thank you for that. When someone asked me why it is important to be a DAV auxiliary member, I usually quickly respond that I learned early on that when our veterans came home, they were handed their discharge papers Veterans' rights aren't served on a silver platter or necessarily easy to obtain. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there are always going to be some legislators who think nothing of stripping away those rights. It was instilled in me that if we don't stand up for our veterans, who will? I'm the daughter of a 93-year-old World War II veteran, and of course my husband, Joe is a service-connected Vietnam veteran who lives daily with his sacrifice for our country. My family is composed of many veterans, including both of our sons, two of my brothers, nephews, and a niece, and the list goes on. Doing what's right for veterans is a way of life for my family, and I'm sure there are thousands of auxiliary members who share that sentiment. 
So, to answer the question posed to me about the role of the DAV auxiliary <coughs> member, I tell them, auxiliary members are veterans advocates. Auxiliary members are caregivers. Auxiliary members know the names of their legislators and, in many cases, those legislators know the name of the auxiliary member. I know mine do because they've heard from me often. Auxiliary members are passionate in their efforts to do whatever they can to make sure veterans and their families are never forgotten. Of the DAV auxiliary members that are active in the legislative program, could you just stand, please? All of our auxiliary members that are... <laughs> Thank you, but we need to do more. We need to reach out to those in our states and get them on board. Their numbers count. DAV auxiliary members volunteer in VA facilities, just as you do. They're not just serving cookies and coffee anymore. Many are drivers and escort patients to their appointments. They touch the lives of many, and they do it out of love and compassion and honor. For those departments and chapters that don't currently have a working relationship with your DAV auxiliary counterpart, I ask you to take that first step to invite them to partner with you on a future project. Unfortunately, the chapter unit relationship in many instances is one of a delegated role for the auxiliary members to cook or provide pre-meeting foods and clean the meeting halls. I think we need to get away from that mindset because there are so many opportunities to work together for the common cause and we could be losing those helpful hands and minds in future endeavors. My theme for the year is Hands Full of Heart, our DAV, DAV Auxiliary Helping Hands. It's time for some heart work. I truly believe that working together can build a bridge to a brighter tomorrow for our veteran community. Let us walk together. After all, we are partners in service working to improve the lives of veterans and their families. I am truly honored and inspired to have had the opportunity to place the DAV auxiliary wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier yesterday, to have that opportunity to honor those veterans. In closing, I want to thank you for your time, and most importantly, thank you for your service. Have a successful conference.